Hello, First Baptist Church. Um, welcome to our weekly COVID update and our also our um, Bible kind of interpretation, kind of where we're headed in the book of Daniel update, as well as our life groups are not uh, currently gathering. I want to say just a word about gathering and scattering. Now, this week we, we were intending to do a Mission DC um, situation where we could minister to our community and wanted to do that. But it seems as though it's not the wise thing to do yet. And so we are trying to not gather in VBS, at the, even at the park at this point, but to scatter. And lots of questions about that, questions in my own mind is, why not? Why don't we, we gather and, and, and why don't we get together? It doesn't seem like this COVID-19 has hit us hard. And so uh, what's the big deal with with us gathering, young people would ask that a, a lot, and I don't fully know the answer to that. I do know they're keeping a close um, handle on the situation, and and our county uh, judge is kind of in charge of all that. And I, I call him weekly before I talk to you, and I did uh, this afternoon. And, and Judge Barron tells me that there have been 55 cases total in Yoakum County. There are 12 active uh, COVID-19 cases as we speak. We've, we've had our first COVID related, I don't know if it was caused by COVID or not, but certainly COVID related death in Yoakum County. And so we're praying for uh, the Hicks family. Our, our mayor's wife uh, passed away, Julie Hicks. I know many of you know that already. So lift them up if you would. But we wanna make sure that uh, we are, are responsible at First Baptist Church, and I, I do want you to pray also for my other son, Jackson, my older son, Jordan, um, tested positive. He's back at work, everything's fine. Uh, my younger son, Jackson's at camp this summer, and he also has tested positive at camp in Livingston, and, and he's feeling fine, but it, he's still having to quarantine for a period of time. So. Please pray for him. I have a nephew, I have a cousin, I have an uncle who have all tested positive for COVID. So I have some people that I'm connected to personally, relationally, uh, akin to. And so many of you do too. And we wanna lift those folks up as they deal with these effects. We have one person and we, we mentioned her Sunday, wanna to continue to lift her up, but I think she's uh, recovering nicely, Susan Durham. That's directly connected to our church and that we know has tested positive. So we want to keep that that way. We don't want to spread this virus if at all possible because it's, there's just a lot of unknown things about it. Uh, and that's all I really know, just like everybody else. We don't know when all this is going to end, but we're uh, living in a fluid situation, a to be announced, to be determined situation. So we're trying to update you every week in our services and, and online. And we'll continue to do our uh, Facebook Live services at uh, 8.30 and 10.45 for those who don't gather. We also are gathering um, and lots of social distancing taking place at 8.45 and 10.30 if you're ready to to venture out as well. We're, we're practicing, we're recommending masks. We're also um, staying six feet apart and doing all the other social distancing practices. So we'd encourage you uh, to come 8.45, 10.30. A, it's a, certainly a different situation than before COVID. The whole world is changing. And that's why we're looking at, at the, the book of uh, Daniel as well. Before we get there, I just, some people have asked and I want to encourage you. Um, the giving uh, has been pretty steady and we thank you so much for your faithfulness. We're still trying to minister uh, to people and one of the efforts that we're doing this week, we want you to be a part of and pray up is a, a pizza and prayer. We're going to pray for our community. We're going to give away a hundred pizzas to, to uh, families with children. We're trying to uh, build a database where we can go and share some Vacation Bible School kind of things with them, some stories and help them. But we want also to, to feed some folks who might need feeding and as well um, just make a, a prayer contact, lift them up 
Families have lots of decisions to make as school approaches. And so we want to lift them up. That's going to take place this Tuesday, um, July the 28th, from 6 to 8 p.m. in our church parking lot. We have some people recruited to do that. If you'd like to help uh, with that, we, would, we could use your help most certainly, passing out pizzas and praying for folks. So please let us know in the office and we'll have a place for you Tuesday, uh, 6 to 8. We also want to encourage our life groups to, to find ways to not just gather, we're not really gathering yet, but to scatter, to discuss uh, these Daniel lessons, to discuss the sermon, to discuss uh, needs in your in your life group and lift up lift people up in prayer and and to go to people that you haven't seen in a while or are wondering about or uh, just curious as to how uh, life is going for them in the in the midst of this pandemic so figure out a way not we're trying to figure out ways you know we want you to try to figure out ways not just to gather but scatter now see that's that's what we've been preparing for with this um, Oikos strategy. We want you to go as the church uh, to folks in your sphere of influence. And, and so the church scatters every time you scatter. And so please uh, continue to lift up those folks and continue to pray the Daniel Prayer Challenge three times a day. Uh, we have that on our website and uh, it involves praying for yourself and your own integrity and, and the church and community leaders, and then your, your oikos, your family, and those who are broken and need Jesus. So we didn't continue to encourage you to do that. And then we're, we're coming to this part of our update, uh, the Daniel uh, faith in fire or faith in the face of adversity. Uh, we have these copies of these. If you want one, we want you to come by. If you can't come by, we'll bring it to you. So just let us know. Call the church office at 592 3130 and we'll get somebody out there with that and even if you don't feel comfortable seeing us we'll leave it on your porch or, or whatever you want us to do uh, as we and we try to still minister to folks especially uh, during uh, the face of, of tough times and adversity so we we want to look at the scripture again and remember that Daniel is really telling us where life is headed where the world is is headed. It's a, uh, a piece of apocalyptic literature. Daniel is to the Old Testament what Revelation is to the New Testament, and that means it deals with the end times. I don't know if we're living in the end times. Every generation has perceived themselves as living in, in the end times when Jesus is about to come back, but it's certainly the times like this remind us that He is coming back, <laughs> and that we need to be ready, and this could be the time and so we want to prepare for that make sure that we're ready but we also want to um, learn lessons from history and so Daniel uh, is a, a prophetic book pointing toward the future but it also some of, of what has taken place and what Daniel writes about is already a part of history and that's what chapter 2 is all about we looked last week at, at um, the insomniac Nebuchadnezzar he couldn't couldn't sleep because of this dream, and Daniel uh, has insight to that. God gave him the special ability to uh, discern what was happening in that that dream, and so he can can it speak to that dream and the vision. And so now we see that uh, that interpreted, and we looked at that last week in our update and. I just want to cover that again briefly. He sees this great colossus, this great statue, and it's uh, really a history of mankind, humankind. And he um, sees the, the head of gold, and that's Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar himself. He sees the, the chest and the arms of silver, which represent the next great kingdom after Babylon. Babylon will fall, and uh, up comes the Medes and the Persians, and Cyrus is the leader of that um, realm. Darius is also the leader of the Medes. And then you see uh, the, the thighs in the midsection of bronze, which Alexander the Great and the, and the Greeks are representative of, or that represents them, the next great empire. All of these world empires dominate 
uh, the scene of history at their particular times. And after Alexander the Great, about 50 years before Christ, come the Romans and the, the Caesars and the emperors. And during that period uh, comes the rock that destroys all of them. There's a, a piece of this statue that is yet to come as I, I look at the interpretation of what the commentators say about that, that's the, the feet of iron and clay. That's the new Rome. But what's already taken place is Babylon and, and Persia and, again, um, the Greeks and, and the Romans. And then Christ comes in the midst of the Romans. And we're living in that period um, of time since then. Now, it's been 2,000 years, but we're still in the midst of that. And, and what comes is what I want to share with you from Daniel 2. Just a few brief verses. And in the days of those kings that God has allowed to rise and fall, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom that shall never be destroyed. Nor shall the kingdom be left to another people. It shall break in pieces all those kingdoms and and bring them to an end and it shall stand forever. That's the kingdom of God. And that stone, that rock is Jesus. And just as you saw that a stone was cut from a mountain by no human hand and then it broke in pieces the iron, bronze, the clay, the silver, and the gold, a great God has made known to the king, Daniel speaking to Nebuchadnezzar at this point, what shall be after this? And this dream is certain. And its interpretation is sure. So, so Daniel sees the future and he points to the rock. And, and we know the rock to be the cornerstone. Jesus himself. And he's come. He's come to set it right. And to fix the situation. And so we know we can count on him and his kingdom that will stand forever. And there will be no end. And we want as many people as possible to be a part of that kingdom. We're going to discuss this more in detail on Sunday, so we hope you'll, you'll tune in and, and talk about the, the rise and fall of nations and where we're headed and, that, and the fragility of, of governments and, and kingdoms and, and the solidity of Christ. So we hope you'll tune in. Uh, and, until then, this is uh, Kyle Strine giving you an update and also calling you to be the salt and light God has called us to be and to scatter in this community for His glory. Thank you.